A few years ago, I was a part-time prison chaplain in the Scottish prison system. And I was, one day I saw a prisoner and uh, I was walking down the, the aisle of the wing to leave. They have aisles with tables and chairs in the middle where they eat and so on. And then you have the cells on the side a couple of floors up. I was walking down the aisle and a prisoner said, are you the new Aussie prison chaplain? I said, yeah, that's me. And a few of his mates stopped to listen because my Australian accent was quite a novelty amongst the Scottish prisoners. And he said to me, I don't want to be a Christian. I said, OK, you don't have to be if you don't want to be, but can I ask why not? And by now, the whole wing had stopped to listen. You could have heard a pin drop. But this is what he said. I don't want to be a Christian because I want to do what I want to do. And I said, look, no offence, but that is what has got you here in the first place. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, you can only do what you want to do. And that's got you here in a prison. Whereas I have the choice to make between doing what I want to do, which just destroys me, or doing what God wants me to do, which brings me life and health and peace. And he said, I've never heard it put like that before. See, freedom isn't what we think it is. Freedom is not what the world has told us it is. It's not that we can just do what we want. Because as that prisoner is now finding out that his sort of freedom, which is doing what he wants, just brings him into prison. It destroys him. But true freedom is the power to choose between life and death between God's way or my way, between spirit and flesh. That's true freedom. See, if I just did what I wanted, I would destroy myself. If I just went and, and, and spent all my money on myself, I'd have no money left to pay the bills. If I just went and uh, went off with another woman, I would destroy my wife, I would destroy my children, I would destroy myself, my loved ones, and I would destroy my father-pleasing aspect of my relationship with God. See, pleasing father is so precious to me, and I don't want to destroy that. I want to keep that, and I'm free to do that. The Bible calls it the law of liberty. But here's, here's the paradox. That the law of liberty is not that we just do what we want, but that we use that freedom to walk in love, to help others, to obey God, to bring light to a dark place, to bring life into death. That's true freedom. And it sounds like a bit of a paradox. But the thing is this, that for the born-again believer, we now have Christ's nature in us, and now we want to bring life. Now we want to be a father pleaser. Because that's his nature. And I, had, and I now have it. So I want to bring life. Uh, in, in my choices now, I want to do it God's way. I want, to do, I want to do that which is of the spirit, not of the flesh. Paul says it this way. He says that everything is allowable, but not everything is beneficial. And true maturity is when you see everything is allowable, but you choose not to do anything harmful. 
But you choose to walk in love. You choose to walk in life. You choose to live consistent with the nature that's in you now. That supernatural Christ nature. That's true freedom. It sounds like a paradox. But because the difference is the Christ nature in us. That we now want to be a father pleaser. We now want to live consistent with his word and his ways and his nature. That's true freedom. And the other, the other thing is that the more we choose freedom, there's a domino effect in that it brings more freedom. It's very powerful. So freedom is not doing what we want. Just ask my prisoner friend. 